<laughs> so I'm going home two weeks has flown like crazy and I only managed to get a week's worth of videos out of it because um, oh, we're going. purely because the weather was so terrible that I couldn't get out I wasn't really going anywhere in the car and because I'm with people in the house all the time who don't know I do this um, I try to keep things a bit um, low key so to speak I'm just straighten you up there so I'm gonna give you a, a leaving video just to make up for it oh dear I kind of hate leaving because it goes so fast and it's eight weeks of the year I get to catch up with family and actually I wasn't so bad this time there are some visits where I come down where just it doesn't take a lot to wind me up um, so I've told you before about how my mum is absolutely obsessed by um, UFO, move, uh, UFO documentaries and the news but it's only one particular news channel, it's GB News, and I absolutely loathe GB News. Um, everything about it just gets my heckles up. And my mum describes them as uh, the voice of the people. And most of the time I avoid it by just not being in the same room as it. So I let, them, let my mum get on with that, and uh, I just keep away and I, you know, I'll sit in the other room with my laptop and I'll put a YouTube video on or something and I can tune out to it. But <laughs> this morning, for some reason, GB News was on at 8am. Oh my God. And it wasn't even proper news. They were talking about dentists doing Botox injections and my mum was getting wound up about that. I mean, oh my goodness. If someone's gonna die of stress-related illnesses, it's gonna be my mum. I don't know why people insist on immersing themselves in so much tragedy and awful stories and pointless stories. So when they woke up in the morning, my dad always sets an alarm, but it's not an alarm. It's the radio and it's Radio 4. So they basically wake up to the sound of the news on Radio 4. And then Dad goes into the bathroom and has a shower and he puts Radio 4 in in there. And then he comes out and then he'll be done, he'll go downstairs and he'll put either Radio 4 on or um, BBC News and it's this constant um, digestion of really unnecessary stuff I always feel that if you can't change something don't let yourself get so involved because unless you're planning to physically get up and do something about an issue don't just sit at home shouting at the TV spouting off at somebody else who doesn't want to hear it so last night I was in bed and mum was running her bath dad was getting ready for bed and mum had been downstairs watching GB News again and she came up and she just started on my dad spouting all these facts at him that she'd heard from GB News about some other subject or other and it doesn't happen very often and my dad turned around and said stop my dad's really good at tuning stuff out I don't know how he does it I mean obviously he's been practicing for 55 years so uh, at least 55 years so I'm sure mum was never like this but um, he's really good at tuning out on things <laughs> oh my goodness and um, he just said stop and mum got really annoyed because she needs her sounding boards because she doesn't stop 
But anyway, it all kind of went quiet after that and Dad went to bed and Mum went for a bath. And it's very rare that I hear Dad tell Mum to just cut it. I mean, if I lived there, I'd find a way to sabotage the TV channel so that she couldn't pick up GB News anymore. I heard about, um, I think it was a documentary I heard, I was watching last year. It was an American documentary about, I think it, I don't know whether it was because this chap had found Fox News or because he'd retired and suddenly he had a lot more time to sit around watching the news. And he got hooked on Fox News, which I don't know much about it, but my understanding is that it's absolutely blooming dreadful. So this chap had got hooked on Fox News and it got worse and worse and this chap was believing everything he read and his attitudes changed, his politics changed and he was driving his family insane. And, um, and in the end, I think it was his daughter who found a way to untune the TV so that he couldn't get the channel. And after a bit, his attitudes changed and he went back to being um, a nice, decent, normal human being again because he wasn't absorbing all this awful news and being convinced by it all and <laughs> I think if I moved in down there for some reason and mum was there I would find a way to sabotage the TV channels because it's not healthy it does concern me it concerns me as much as the addiction to UFO documentaries Honestly, um, yeah, I don't know. It's a funny old world. So, th this is something I do not miss about leaving, is that I don't have to listen to any of that. I can go back to a news-free life. And that's... That's a good thing. A lot of traffic today. It's a Friday morning. It's before 10 o'clock. I always try and get away early because I'm in between the works traffic and of course Fridays people come tend to come out of work early. Right, so I'm just going to pull over into a garden centre. Oh gosh, what on earth is going on here? There might not be nothing, anything wrong with my radio and my brain might just be unable to comprehend the fact that something I've done for 12 years I've suddenly forgotten how to do. Right, let's have a look. Oh, it is on. There's nothing wrong with my radio. I'm an idiot. I am such an idiot. I've got a new cradle for my phone because I had to cobble the cradle together for this uh, camera so that it sits on its own and I can ignore it. So I've got a new cradle for my phone uh, for my maps so that when I'm doing my long journeys is he stopping there? I think he is. Um, I always have Google Maps on just in case of any problems ahead because if I have to suddenly change route It'll give me suitable alternatives and it'll warn me when things are coming up and when there's trouble, which is great. And I don't have to touch it. Um, but then also, I set up for long journeys a Spotify playlist of podcasts. And once you hit play, and I've put enough hours together, it'll just play one podcast after another on the way home. And then that's something else that I don't have to think about, which is great. So that gets me all set up for my driving. But for now, I'm just talking at you so that I can fill in the last of my hey, I'm away trips and just talk about stuff. And last night, I was thinking about all the things I was going to talk about on this on the way home, and I can't remember any of them really. Um, I'm just thinking about 
I've been thinking about what I'm going to post when I get home, so I've already mentioned that I need to do an end of March finance podcast and I need to do my end of tax year um, self-assessment um, discussion because it's really interesting to see how very different the finance, the numbers look on two different sets. So if you just looked at my earning figures, I have earned enough to pay tax. But by the time you've got rid of all the, the things that are untaxable, like the universal credit, uh, like the working tax credits, um, expenses that I've claimed against my business. Why didn't you indicate, you silly person? So dangerous. Um, by the time you've knocked all that off, I only have a profit margin across all my incomes, that's all my incomes, not just my business, of 10,000, or around about 10,000. I'll detail it when I do the actual vlog for it. Um, so, I earn enough to pay for my life. Last year, my total expenses for the year was just over 13,000, I think it was. This year, at the moment, it's showing um, about eleven and a half thousand, but of course th there are still other insurances and things I need to pay out. I've got to buy my business insurance, but I have found a much, much cheaper company for that this year. I'm really scaling back on the insurance I have for my business because there's no point in, in having it. Um, a lot of the things I'm paying for on my insurance I don't need anymore. I don't need public liability or anything like that because I literally just work from home. And I probably should have sorted that out a few years ago. I think I've probably wasted too much money. But the difference in the insurance prices is quite impressive actually. So I'm, I'm gonna be pleased about that. So that means I'm changing companies. Um, I've just had my quote through for my home contents insurance. Now, because my insurance is tied to the letting agency, so I can't shop around. I'm stuck with the company that they use because it's designed to cover fixtures and fittings in the flat that I am responsible for that belong to the landlord. So if I, I don't know, break a door or a window or something like that, then the insurance will cover that on behalf of my landlord. Um, but it also, it's covering my contents as well. I don't cover a lot of my contents. I don't have anything that's worth repairing or replacing. And most insurance policies won't cover tech that's over a year old. Now I have just bought a new laptop, but I class that as a uh, something that I own for my business. So I'm going to cover that through my business insurance um, because it'll cover tech up to certain amounts. So I'm going to cover that and it'll also cover it for away from home, which is great because, I, you know, when I'm going away and I mostly use my laptop for work, pretty much everything is work based. So that's covered that. So my home insurance pretty much, I don't know, it covers um, the contents of my fridge freezer. It'll cover the basics of replacing you know, furniture, clothes, whatever, if something happens to the flat. I can't get it down anymore because I'm hardwired in to be covered for certain things which I don't have any control over, like the fixtures and the fittings, carpets, uh, fridge, um, uh, cooker, things like that. If I bust any of that, it's covered. And I can't change that. And last year my quote was uh, 200 pounds and 14 pence. This year it's gone up uh, 25 pounds and I've already got the content that I have covered for me down to the bare minimum so I'm stuck with that 25 pound increase but my business insurance is going to go down by uh, I think it's 200 pounds so or it might even be more than that I'm still coming in paying out less in my total year expenses so far than I was last year so I have to keep an eye on things because it would be nice to pay out as little as possible for stuff that I have no choice over. So even though some stuff has gone up, some stuff has come down, so it kind of meets in the middle, so to speak.
I also want to do a post about starting a retirement fund later in life. So any of you who have been following me will know that I started to talk about getting a private pension towards the end of last year. And I just want to do an update on that and other things that I'm putting in place because I haven't suddenly come into a ton of money that I can invest and it's never going to be a very well funded fund for retirement but it's going to be better than just the state pension it is definitely going to be better so I am going to talk about that on a separate post which hopefully will come up in the next couple of weeks I've got to get home and sort myself out and get unpacked and I'm going home today and then tomorrow I have two cleaning jobs to do oh that's a, that that's something that I should mention I had a text uh, two days ago from the boss the, the boss who's being forced to retire who I do the cleaning for saying uh, the lads came in after the Easter break so long weekend away and said none of the bins have been emptied and I said well that's because I'm on holiday for two weeks I said I gave your administrator all my dates and that was fine so not my problem what's mostly insulting is that for the first week that I have been away they clearly haven't noticed that I haven't been in at all so I go in twice a week to clean for them and they haven't even noticed that I hadn't been in and no one seemed to query it so that means that they went away for a long weekend with all their bins overflowing with mouldy old food and all the things they usually do like leaving old food out on the counters all the cutlery and the crockery would have been piled up in the sink unwashed and um, they've come back to that so they're having to do that for themselves this week um, but I will be going in tomorrow and Sunday and I break it up into two cleans just to make it less boring and I will um, get back to routine I also switched off my vacation mode for Vinted and Etsy yesterday because I've just taken to putting everything on vacation when I'm away and overnight I've had a Vinted sale so when I get in I need to sort that I've already had an email from them saying um, are you going to send this soon? you get three days or something to send something so uh, anyway so I said yeah I'll, I'll either send it out this evening or first thing tomorrow I might get it out tonight it depends who it's got to go with it's on the in post I can just take it over the road but we'll have to see so busy busy straight back into work when I get back which will at least distract me from the fact I am home which is always a little bit depressing uh, so yeah so it's kind of it really I don't think I have anything else to say I've gambled at you for 20 minutes about leaving the south, heading back to the north, back to routine again, and stuff that I'm going to post about in the next week or so. So, like and subscribe if you haven't already, as they say, and I will catch up with you again from the north. So normally I'm pretty lucky with my journeys home. They usually come in mm, maybe around five hours, which is pretty good <laughs> for 250-ish miles. Not today. I'm on the last leg of yet another hold up. There have been pockets of hold ups all the way along. 
I even had to take a diversion off the M5 through West Bromwich, which was not fun. And the closer I've got to home, the longer the journey has got and the slower the journey has got. So I was hoping to come in around half two, three o'clock. I'm now coming in just after four o'clock. And you just have to go with it. The only thing that bothers me is whether or not when I get back someone's in my parking space. Um, and if they are, it's because it's someone who isn't supposed to be parking there at all. Uh, so I'm hoping I'm going to have a parking space or I'm just going to have to dump my car in the middle of the car park. Because uh, I have a lot of unpacking to do. But, as you can see, the sun is out. And all I have to do when I get in is just sort the flat out, air the flat, get everything in, unpack. And that's pretty much all I really have to do today. Sort some food out, get something out the freezer and get it defrosted ASAP. Because it's now apparently dinner time, well it's almost dinner time according to my phone. <laughs> it's going to be a late one tonight, I think. There's a lot to do. Oh dear, oh dear. Anyway. This is a nightmare. And none of it has been roadworks, which is weird. It is all crashes. All idiots driving like idiots and making life difficult for other people. It's not even breakdowns, it's actual crashes. And it's just so annoying because, you know, when I was driving down, I had a few narrow misses with people who were more interested in what was going on in their phone than driving safely on the M25 at 60 miles an hour. I had one guy who almost, almost plowed into the back of me. He was drifting across the lanes. It's like your life flashes in front of your eyes. Um, and I've seen a few uh, lane drifters on the way back and you just have to really watch what you're doing. Just watch what everyone around you is doing to stay safe on the roads. Don't speed. Keep your eye on the roads. Don't presume to know what the driver in front of you or next to you is going to do because they can be really erratic. And I don't get nervous on the roads but if you're careful you know, you'll make it. Anyway, this is the long, last slow slog home. I'm really tired, I'm really thirsty, and I'm really hungry, and I've still got to unload an entire car's worth of stuff yet. Um, first world problems, huh? I guess. Uh... Get in there. I have about 20 minutes to go.